Being a private investigator means two things. You can be sure you'll run into trouble, and you can never be sure you'll get out of it. Not much you can do about it, I guess, except, like Julie always says, Walk softly, Peter Troy. Julie Summers, my girl Friday, is a tower of strength. My counselor, friend, cohort, and advisor. She also cramps my style somewhat. For Julie is a doll in her own rights, and she thinks of me as her own exclusive property, which is okay most of the time. But there are occasions when a guy likes to cut loose. You know what I mean? Take, for instance, the case of the Red Hot Mama. The lady in question was one Melody Jones. She was a dancer, uh, an exotic dancer to be exact. And no matter where she played, Melody Jones, London's Red Hot Mama, really laid him in the aisles. At the Acme Burlesque Theatre... Melody Jones literally and figuratively brought the house down. The show really went off with a bang, assisted by the detonation of a homemade bomb somewhere up in the gallery. Luckily, it was mostly noise and smoke, but it effectively busted up the rest of the show. And for days afterwards, despite Melody's popularity and uh, undoubted talent, the crowd stayed away in droves. There were no casualties at the theater, but Melody's fans were badly shaken by the explosion, to say the least. 24 hours later, the girl was in my office pouring out, not bumps and grinds, but a tale of woe. At the Bijou Theater in Paris, the fire sprinklers came on and doused the audience. At the Roxy Club in Tangiers, the place did catch fire. And the audience panicked and two people got killed in the stampede. And at the highlighter rooms in Brussels, someone got in my dressing room before the show and, and, and ripped all my costumes to bits. Well, that'd be a bit of a problem, wouldn't it, Melody? I've seen the size of those costumes of yours. They'd fit into a matchbox easy and still leave room for half the matches. Okay, okay, but someone still ruined my act at the highlighter rooms, and they've been doing it consistently for the past three months. Yeah. You've been to the police, of course. The police? Ha. Huh. Huh. They're more interested in censoring than investigating. Mm. Well, any obvious enemies? Any jilted boyfriends? You kidding? Uh, by that, you mean... Uh... I get along well with men, yeah. But there always has to be the parting of the ways, you know. Uh, no special boyfriends. Oh, they all think they're special until they get the old heave home. Oh. It's difficult, huh? Yes. So they told me you were a trouble breaker. Yeah, well, it pays to advertise. Are you uh, going to help me? Oh, yes, yes. Well, thank you. Oh, don't thank me until we've got this business cleaned up. Mr. Troy, when you catch them... Uh, that had better be soon, Melody. Very soon. Huh? It's a classical pattern. In these cases, it never varies. Why, what do you mean? We're dealing with some sort of nut. <laughs> You're telling me. Some sort of very dangerous nut. He's only just warming up. What? I mean it. Turning on sprinklers, ripping gowns, planting harmless but noisy bombs. Say, now, wait a minute. Offhand, if you... he follows the pattern, I'd say from here on in, we really start to worry. You see, Melody, I think this particular psychopath is just about ready to start a murder rampage. Now, now, let's see what we've got on the Melody Jones case. A list of current boyfriends, associates, and business acquaintances. Business acquaintances? Melody Jones? Certainly. Agents, accountants, etc. Well, it sounds like you're talking about a Hollywood star. I'm talking of... about a girl that earned fifteen thousand pounds in the last financial year. Fifty? Wow. Maybe I'll swap my typewriter for a couple of spangles and a pair of net stockings. <laughs> I can just see it. Well, don't. Uh, well, getting back to Melody. Good idea. Uh, the people she knew three months ago. That's when all this started. Would fill a telephone directory. Oh no. 
I'm sorry, Pete, but in this one there's just no starting point. You should never have taken on the case. Well, I've got a hundred brand new pounds in my pocket that say I should. Well, what are you going to do? Well, some footwork, I guess. From here on in, Melody Jones doesn't even cross the street without me knowing why, where, and how. <laughs> As to the how, it'll be with the hips a-swinging, Pete. Hmm, nice. Grow up. Oh, I did, Julie. I did. Well, hello, Mr. Troy. <laughs> come on in. Well, I saw the lights of your apartment on, so I thought I might come up and catch a cup of coffee. Oh, just fine. You've uh, been watching my place? Mm hmm. A service is my motto. Found out anything yet? No. Nope. Could be so many people, couldn't it? Uh, you take cream and sugar? Please. Melody, I need names. Names of people you knew three months ago. Someone who might have a grudge against you. Well, now, let me see. Um, yeah, there was uh, Carlos. Spanish type, fiery, uh -huh. dramatic. You know the kind? Uh-huh. Threatening, shouting, real wild. Carlos Mantovi lives in Madrid. He's in the import business. Yeah, Carlos Mantovi, good. Yeah. Well, then there was uh, Sir Hubert Tinsley. I used to call him Tinny, always begging me to give up my career. <laughs> Funny fellow. Yeah, he might fit the bill. And uh, then there was uh, Monty Oppenheimer. Uh, wait a minute. The Monty Oppenheimer? The racket king? Oh, yes. Oh, wow. He was wild, but he was a rather violent man. You know, they all wanted me to give up my career. Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> what about business associates? Uh, your agent, for instance. Harry Lomit? Ha, <laughs> ha. Oh, you're joking. He wouldn't want me to give up the theater. It's worth too much to him. And there never was anything between Harry and me. He's a happily married man with four nice kids. And... Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Hello? Melody Jones here. Hello? Who is it? Oh, come on, say something. God. Who was that? Having the faintest idea there was someone on the other end of the line. I could hear them breathing, but they didn't say anything. <laughs> okay, Melody, if anyone knocks at that door within the next half hour, don't answer it. Huh? And keep away from the windows. Yeah, but it's I... an old, old trick. Someone ringing through to find out if you're at home. Let's just hope they don't know I'm here. That could give them a nasty surprise. <laughs> Mr. Troy, I think this is all rather silly. Okay, so it could be a false alarm. Oh, it was probably a wrong number. In which case, the party calling would have said so. I don't much like the position of that telephone of yours. It's right next to that window. And as I remember, there's a call box in the street down below. Oh, Mr. Troy, you're a born worrier, aren't you? Lady, you're paying me a hundred pounds to worry, remember? <laughs> nice to know you take your job so seriously. Hey, well, someone has to take something seriously around here. You mean me? Oh, don't take any notice of this attitude of mine. It's just false bravado. Deep down, I'm pretty darn shaken by all this, I can tell you. Well, as long as you re... Oh, that's probably Harry wanting to know... Get away from that phone! But I got Get it. Get down! <laughs> well, there was no false alarm this time. Gee, I... I could have been killed. Stay where you are, Melody. Now, I'm going to get a peek at that call box. That's where the sniper must have been. Well? The call box door's open. Yeah, it figures our rifleman called you from there, then watched your silhouette against the window as you went to answer his call. Anyway, he's, he's gone now. Like I said, Melody, he's finished fooling around. Now he wants to kill you. But, but, but why? Oh, why? who can explain the reasons behind the actions of a maniac? Oh, gee, this is horrible. It's horrible. Any of those three guys you mentioned earlier handy with a rifle? Oh, wait a minute. Yep, Carlos was in the army at one time. Sir Hubert? 
I'm very keen on hunting. Yeah, and I don't have to ask about Monty Oppenheimer. If it fires a bullet, then Monty knows all about how to use it. But I can't believe that any one of them would want to kill me. <laughs> well, someone does, that's for sure. So what do I do now? Well, don't alter your routine at all. Oh, look, I couldn't go on at the theater. You've and... got to. Now, I'll be around, watching out for trouble. Gee, thanks. He's going to try again, and pretty soon. All I have to do is catch him in the act, that's all. Mr. Choi, dear, I'd be obliged if you'd catch him before he acts. Afterwards, maybe too late. Mm. Well, that was uh, some performance, anyway. Oh, an artist. That girl is a rare artist. <laughs> The trouble with you, Julie, is that you do not appreciate the female form divine. That's pretty strange, because you've got a fairly divine form yourself. Oh, come on, come on, let's go. The theater's just about empty, and you promised to buy me some supper. And so I will, but I want to hang around for a little while. Why? Give the place the once-over, that's all. This maniac's never struck at the same place twice running. Well, I've got a feeling he's about to alter his habits. He never blatantly shot at her before, either. Uh, do the police know about that yet? Uh, no, no, they don't. It's a little snippet of information I'm keeping to myself. Dangerous. Julie, this whole setup is dangerous. Oh, Pete, the theater's empty now. Come on, let's go. There's something rather ominous about an empty theater. Actors and actresses tend to... What was that? Freeze. Don't make a move. You were wrong about the theater being empty. We have company. Someone crouching down in the second row. Pete. He doesn't want to be seen. Now, that is significant. Pete, the house lights. Yeah. They've turned the house lights off. Mm, that makes it difficult. He, he's coming toward us. Pete, he's coming straight for us. empty theater is an awesome place at the best of times. But it's even worse when there's the possibility that there could be a maniac snooping around close by. Just before the house lights went off, I'd spotted a crouched figure up front in the second row of the stalls. Maybe I was ultra nervous by this. Maybe he was a perfectly innocent member of the audience who'd stayed behind to look for something he dropped. But I wasn't taking any chances. His footsteps were coming towards us, slowly. Julie clutched at my arm, her fingers dug into my flesh. In the grey darkness, I could just make out a shadow approaching. Pete, if he comes any closer, I'll scream. Okay, Buster, what's the score? What's that? A gun. He's got a gun. And a torch, my friend. Oh, well. Now, let's have a look at you. What, what do you want? What do you think? Julie, your handbag. Give it to me. Here. I asked you a question. I'm going to ask you one. How's your catching arm, Buster? What? Pete, are you all right? No. I'm... No, no, don't shoot him again, please. All right. What's going on in here? Someone put on the house lights. There's a gunshot in here. Put the house lights on. Oh, Harry, he's getting away. Where's he making for? I can't see. Come on, we'll lose him. Get those down house lights on somebody. Okay, Inspector. How's lights going on now? That's better. Oh, oh, Pete, are you all right? Oh, I, I think so. Oh, I thought you... Uh, the gun seemed to go off in my face. The oh. glass must have knocked me senseless. All right, Troy, who was it? And just exactly what's going on here? Oh, who called for Inspector Caswell? I'm here, and that's all that matters. Yeah, well, the delicate, sweet timbre of your voice is not doing my head one bit of How good. How did you get here, Inspector? Someone fired some shots at a house in South Kensington tonight. We learned they were aimed at Miss Melody Jones' apartment, so I came along to question her about it and ask her why the matter hadn't been reported. Oh, no. Don't tell me she's a client of yours, Troy. Oh, actually, no, I'm here for the fishing. Now, you listen to me. I seem to spend my entire waking life doing that. There's something odd here. Oh, go to the top of the class. Wasn't there an explosion at this theater a few days ago? That's right. Pete's investigating it. Yes, yeah, so the police. And if they'd had any success, there wouldn't have been any bullets fired through Miss Jones' window earlier. Now, who was that man you were fighting with? Inspector, I haven't got a clue. 
But it's just possible that he may have been a psychopathic maniac. Oh. And Pete's not joking. Look, Troy, you'd better tell me about it. I'll read about it in my memoir. Troy, I warn Pete, you. Pete, Pete, are you all right? Oh, you poor boy. One of the stagehands told me there was some shooting. Yeah, and I can and vouch I... for it. There was, Melody. Oh, Pete, you're not hurt. No, no, I'm okay. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Pete, he was here. You well, know, it could be. No, no, no. He was definitely here. Will someone please... Melody, help? what are you talking about? Oh, look. Look at my hand. You cut yourself. You know how I did it? I put my fingers into my jar of cleansing what? cream. What? Someone put a whole lot of broken glass in amongst my face cream, and it happened tonight. Pete, that man... Yeah, the trouble is it was dark. I don't think I could identify him. But I know I'd remember his voice. <laughs> The trouble with this case was that it was impossible to anticipate the next move. The only definite thing was that we knew there would be another move. And it would happen quickly. And I wanted to be there when it did. The next night, the police escorted Melody Jones home. I stayed behind in the theater. In fact, I hid myself in her empty dressing room after the show. The uh, enemy had acted twice in quick succession. The gunshots had missed. The broken glass hadn't worked. He wouldn't be satisfied until he succeeded in really harming Melody now. Around midnight, my hunch paid off. The door to her dressing room creaked open. And this time I was ready for the intruder. Who's that? Don't make a move, Buster. After last night, I'm a little on the edgy side. A nervous trigger finger, you get it? All right, Mr. Troy. You can put down the gun. Oh, not on your sweet life. I'm not here to make trouble. Oh? I'm here for the same reason you are. I'm carrying out an investigation. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll just bet you are. That's the truth. You better have a look at my identification. Uh, take it out slowly. Okay. You what? Satisfy you? Herbert Martin, insurance investigator. North London Insurance and Trust Company. That's right. Well, I don't get it. It's quite simple. Miss Melody Jones is a client of ours. Ah, oh, so? She has a very specific policy with us. It ensures her against loss of income due to a fault beyond her control. Yeah, go on. Each time a performance is cancelled or anything untoward happens to our client, we have to shell out. Uh, you'll have been very busy recently. Too busy, Mr. Troy. And what does that mean? Melody Jones is capable of earning quite a lot of money as a performer. We estimate in the vicinity of perhaps four or five thousand a year. Oh, now, wait a minute. This last year, her income was in excess of fifteen thousand pounds. Ah, well, that tallies with my information. My company paid over nine thousand pounds of that income, Mr. Troy. You mean... This series of mishaps has cost us that amount of money in claims. After the bomb outrage in this theatre, we paid her well over 500 pounds. Naturally, we're a little perturbed. Yes, I'll just bet you are. So I'm here for the same reason as you. To forestall the next attempt. I see. Well, you heard about the broken glass and the cleansing cream? Yes. Yeah, we're dealing with a psychopath. I don't think so. Well, look, anyone who goes around ah. doing the... Yep. You hear that? Yes. Must have come from out there. Stage wings. Let's go take a look-see. Right. See anything? Up there. Above us. There's someone up there. Well, they must have dropped something. It's over here. What is it? What? What is it? Yeah. Take a look. A knife. Yes, our friend is up to his old tricks. Oh, I wonder. I got it. The safety curtain. What? Someone's fiddling around with a safety curtain. With a knife? Maybe they're fixing it to fall. Yeah, that figures. That's the only stairway leading up. Let's go get him. Okay. Over to the right. The right. Yes, yes, I can see him. And they've seen us. Okay. Let's have a showdown. All right, up there. You're cornered. Take cover. I'm way ahead of you, buster. Small caliber bullets. A lady's gun, I'd say. I think maybe we can scare this one out. Melody! I thought it might be. Drop that gun, Melody. That's better. 
Yeah. Martin, you don't you don't mean to tell me that she was the That's one. right. You set up the whole works. Right from the very start. Oh, uh, well, I'll be. You want to do some explaining, Melody? What's there to explain? You know the score, don't you? You fixed up everything yourself? For the insurance money. Yeah, that's right. And you brought me in on the case? Well, I had to make it look good, didn't I? It was pretty convincing when you tangled with this fellow. I knew there was someone snooping around. Yeah, but the, the rifle shots. My agent, Harry. He aimed high and wide. Well, the bomb and the fire and the sprinklers. She I... fixed them all. Who'd suspect the star of the show? She had access to all parts of the theater, didn't she? Yeah, what were you doing up here, Melody? Huh. You're so smart. Find out. The evidence is right here. She was cutting through the lines holding the safety curtain in place. As soon as the house curtains were pulled back, it would have fallen. What? You could have killed someone. Wouldn't have worried you, would it, Melody? You've already got some deaths on your conscience. Yeah, uh, Tangiers, the theater fire. Some people got killed in the panic. Oh, sister, you really are a cool cookie. All right, come on, Melody. Let's go down. Got a car waiting outside. Uh, well, it was nice while it lasted. Just shows you. You can make suckers out of insurance companies. Yes, looks like we're going to have the last laugh. Yeah, well, look, let's get out of here. This place gives me the creeps. You know, Pete, I could have killed you any time I like while you were down there on that stage. Oh, it was too dark. I could follow the noise your footsteps make. You see, you don't walk softly, Peter Troy. <laughs> that Melody Jones, London's red-hot mama, turned out to be a cool cookie. That was a pretty unique insurance fraud she pulled on that company. It netted her over £9,000, even though a couple of people did get killed. Oh, but that wouldn't worry a cool cookie. Now, personally, I think it's a shame that she's out of circulation now, because I don't agree with the investigator's estimate that she could earn just four or five thousand pounds per annum with her act. For my money, it was worth a million dollars just to watch her shimmy. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. So many people don't appreciate true art. <laughs> <laughs> 